What's up everyone? In today's video, I wanted to share my top five VS Code extensions for web developers in 2021. Coming in at number five is the Prettier VS Code extension. Now you might be thinking, why would I use the Prettier extension if I can just use the command line tool? Well, the extension actually allows you to set up Prettier as your default formatter in your editor. So what do I mean by that? So if you're over here in your editor and let's say I change some stuff around and I can just open up the command prompt and type in format document and just go ahead and format that for me. It also allows me to set format on save. So whenever I save my document, it automatically formats that for me. An additional thing you can do, which is kind of neat and I use this all the time, is if you copy a piece of code and you paste it into a new file, you make sure to set the language settings to that file to JavaScript and whenever you're editing in this file, even though it's just a file that's saved temporarily, it doesn't actually exist, you can still format this file on the fly. This is great if you want to send snippets of code to people already formatted. I use this all the time. Now the last trick that you can do too, which comes in handy sometimes, you won't be needing this all the time, is um, it allows you to select a piece of code and use format selection. And then you'll see when I click format select with, Prettier comes up and then I also have like the built-in formatter that comes with VS Code. You can format with Prettier and format just smaller snippets of code, which comes in handy from time to time. Now coming in at number four on the list for me is going to be Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Now I don't use Tailwind for work, but I use it for all my side projects. And this is a must if you're using Tailwind in your projects. The way this works is whenever you're in a set of classes and you start typing, there you go. I didn't even start typing. You press spacebar and it automatically tries to auto-complete all of the Tailwind CSS classes. So, and as you start typing, it's gonna narrow them down. And the super neat thing here is you can see I when I have colors pulled up, it's actually gonna render the color in line. And then over on the right side, it's gonna show me what that actually translates to in CSS. Now, using this prevents me from switching back and forth between the Tailwind documentation and my editor. And anything that saves you time between switching your editor and um, going outside to look something up on a website is gonna save you time throughout the day. And that time adds up big time. Now, next on my list, for number three is gonna be GitHub's pull request and issues extension. Now, I'm gonna to switch to a different file over here and I actually already have it pulled up. Um, let me close this so you can see how it works. Over on the right side, um, there's this new uh, GitHub tab that opens up and it gives you access to pull requests and issues. Now I don't use issues that much because um, we use we create issues in another platform. We don't use GitHub issues all that much, but that's actually really useful if you work on open source code, which most people manage issues that way. But if we go over to pull requests and we click all, we can see all the pull requests that exist on GitHub and you can click on them and view the descriptions right inside of VS code. And it actually formats it very, very similar to the way um, GitHub does and you have all the functionality included. You can leave comments, approve, uh, request changes, and you can even check out that branch that is referenced in the PR. And the really neat thing here is you can click on the files and it'll show you a diff right inside of your editor. Again, this saves me a bunch of time without having to switch between GitHub in my web browser and I can just view them all right inside of VS Code. Anything that saves me time without having to context switch is a huge win for me. Now, the next one I wanna show you here is one that I found out about recently, but ever since I found out about it, I can't see myself ever going back to not using this. So I've disabled it here so you can really see the difference. It's called bracket pair colorizer. And now if I open up a file here, we'll reuse this file. I'm gonna go ahead and enable this extension. And now you'll notice that 
what this extension does is going to match up all of the brackets and parentheses in my file. So it added this left, this uh, colored line going across the left hand side. And as I move my cursor around in my code, that line is going to switch and it's always going to highlight the current bracket that I'm inside. And it's going to do the same thing for parentheses. So you see I'm inside this if statement and it underlines it with a pink line and gives the parentheses that same pink color. Now, ever since I've used this, I don't see myself ever going back. This has saved me so much time when I'm going through long files that have multiple brackets and multiple nested definitions. And like I said, it's a super simple extension, but it's gonna save me a ton of time. Now, the last one on my list is called GitLens. And now GitLens does a bunch of different things, but what I use it for the most is the line blame mode. So you can see over here, whatever current line I'm on, it's gonna show me the last commit that relates with that specific line. So what this does is it's gonna show me the last commit that was associated with this line of code. And now this is super useful. I don't always have it turned on cause it can get a little distracting, but you can toggle it as you can see, toggle line blame right from that command. And with that on every line, you can see the commit that's associated with that line. And now the cool thing is at the bottom of your, I think this is called the activity bar, it's gonna show you that same commit. And then here you can reveal it in the sidebar, which can take you directly to GitHub, or you can reset to this commit and view all the different changes that were associated with that commit. Not only that line, but any other files which is super useful. And now GitLens does a bunch of other really useful things, but this is mainly what I use it for. The last thing that it does that I find really useful is you can turn on um, file blame. So you can view all of the changes to this file um, by commit, which is pretty useful. This is a view that you can see in GitHub. But again, this allows you to see it right from your editor without having to leave. And that wraps it up for extensions that I use for web development. Um, let me know if there's any additional ones that you like to use in the comments below. And if you find this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That really helps the channel out. And I'll catch you all in the next video.